everyone welcome back to ansible automation video series in this part 3 tutorial we'll learn about ansible group and host variables which is a powerful tool for efficiently organize your variables for deploying playbooks so we'll start off by going over the basics of inventory variable first like what they are and how they functions then we'll look at some real world examples where the group and host variable can come in handy in addition to that we'll also implement a playbook calling those host and group variables we will be using chat gpt for this demo so that we can generate a code for our playbook so this is going to be an interesting demo so let's get started all right so let's quickly recap what we have covered in our previous video so we created an inventory file that consists of host information then we declared all the essential variables such as ansible username password and os type and these variables are used by the ansible control node for successful login to the network devices then we have prepared a playbook that runs few commands and pull the configuration details and save to a backup folder specified in the playbook task. So let's quickly run that playbook. As you can see here, the configuration backup has taken for vios-r1 and the switch1, which is currently live in the network. All right, so that's pretty much we have done in our previous video. So now, what is group and host wars? how that is going to help to ease our implementation of Ansible automations. So let's take a look on that next. As the name suggests, these are just folders that are created manually inside the Ansible project directory. Again, this is completely optional, but very helpful when dealing with the large scale playbook deployments. So just put this in context, group wars carries the variables for multiple hosts at once. Usually we'll have all.yml file for endure group variables. Whereas the host wars apply variables specific to the individual host or the device. So let's take some examples here to understand this better. So when we have just inventory file, whatever variable we specified at the group hierarchy will part of the host wars. So here you can see all these variables are in the host wars in the inventory output. This is something we do when we get started with Ansible automation and run it on few devices. However, when we scale this up, let's say 100 devices, and each device or the group has wide range of variable to be configured. Then we need to have a better solution to organize this. To explain this through some examples, imagine we have a DC network consists of bunch of core switches and distribution switches. And all these switches are to be configured with same BGP AS number. For that, we can specify the BGP ASN on a group variables under all.yml. So if you look at the result of this inventory, it looks something like this where we have the BGP ASN across all the device part of all groups. Next, we want to configure an OSPF as an IGP protocol. And as per the design requirement, for all the core switches, we need OSPF 100 process ID. And for the distribution switch, it should be on 200. For that, we would need to define those variables with the group numbers under the group var directory. So the output looks something like this, where we have the OSPF process ID for the core devices as 100 and 200 for the distribution switches. So these are some real use case on how efficiently we can organize variables in Ansible. Now I believe you understand the idea behind using the group and host wars. Let's see these things in action by implementing a playbook. First of all, we'll create a group and host war folder in our project directory. Then inside the group wars, we'll create a file called all.yml and this would carry all the common configuration for all devices. Similarly, inside the host war, let's create another YAML file for specific configuration that are going to be implemented on switch1. So I'll create a file exactly like the host name we have put in the Ansible inventory file. Alright, now we'll copy some of the variables from the inventory file to the all.yml because these are the common parameters. Now let's run the inventory check command we have seen in the last video. As you can see in the inventory check, it looks like we can see the required variables are defined under the each host. Now we have built our new inventory structures. Next we'll take some assistance from ChatGPT, an AI solution to see if we can get some input to develop a playbook. So what we are looking here would be we want a playbook that will enable the SNMP servers and the trap information on Cisco iOS devices. So let's type those requirements in the chat section. 
and the more specific details you can give the better result chat gpt can generate so here you go it produced a long list of code with some nice explanation now what we'll do here is we'll copy this code and put it in our vs code terminal and work on modifying this code based on our requirement of course whatever chat gpt provides can't be fully relied but it can help you to build some outline so let's go ahead and create the playbook file first and paste this code whatever we got from chat gpt first of all our playbook will be running on all devices mentioned on our inventory file so let's change it to all then we'll comment out of the var section because we want to input the variables from the group and the host vars so we'll see that part shortly next come the configuration lines for the snmp so we'll use ios underscore config module function from ansible and for configuring snmp we need mainly two commands very first thing we are going to do is configure the snmp server and the version details and the community string and these details can go in single line of config on the next line of configuration we want to activate the snmp traps so to make it simple we'll activate all the traps now of course if you want to include other configuration you can add it here then we'll use save underscore function so that we can save this configuration onto the device memory with underscore item is used to loop between the snmp servers since we have multiple servers to be configured finally let's save this result with a register keyword and call these variables on the next task to print the results let's add some condition with when statement because this task will run only during when os type match with ios of course we can add more intelligence to it but let's make it simple all right so that is how our final playbook look like now comes to declaring variables let's see how to do that first we'll specify the general snmp server details on the group vars so under all.yml we'll have the community and the snmp host information as the list element to simplify this let's go with just two host first one use the public community and the other would be having the private community under the host vars remember we have created a file specific to switch one on that yaml file we'll define another set of snmp server with a different ip address we'll use 10.0.0.11 and the community string as public so before we run the playbook let's see if we have any snmp related configuration on the devices as you can see there is no snmp config on this box now we'll go ahead and test our playbook the playbook has run successfully and we can see many ansible logs generated Specifically here, you can see the change happened on the round robin, first on the vios-r1, which is updated the first SNMP server IP address. Then the change happened on switch2 and updated 10.0.0.11 server and the public community. Then the second change happened on the vios-r1, that updated the host with 10.0.0.2 SNMP and the community as private. Okay, now we are good with the playbook execution. Finally, let's hop into the devices and see if we can see those configuration updates. So on the router, we can see both SNMP hosts are configured along with the trap details. Let's access switch as well. Here you can see only the single SNMP IP along with the trap informations. The one thing to note here is that whenever we have variables defined both host as well as the group variables, the one mentioned in the host var directory have more precedence than the group wars. So in this demo, whatever we have mentioned specifically for the switch one have been configured. However, since we don't have host wars for the router, it takes the parameters from the all.yml from the group wars. Hope you get the point and my implementation logic to explain this. So that's it from today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leave your comments in the comment sections. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell icon not to miss future videos. Hey, thank you for watching. See you on next video.